السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبشر صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل لقدة من لساني قولي وبزني علم اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا أهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بكم في محاضرات رسول الله العربي في محاضرة تفسير القرآن العظيم Uh, I welcome you all <coughs> to the class of Tafsir, Ibn Kasir. And inshallah ta'ala, today we are beginning with our Tafsir Juz Amma, <coughs> Tafsir of the 30th Juz, the 30th part of the Quran. As we know that the Quran has been divided into 30 parts. And <coughs> today we are starting with Suratun, Tafsir Suratun Naba, Tafsir Suratun Naba, which was revealed in Makkah. <coughs> so we have the first batch of the verses are from verses 1 to 16. So the first thing what we will do is try to understand what the first verses are, right? All the first 1 to 16 and then we start reading the <coughs> uh, uh, tafsir, inshallah. So first we'll look at the words and if you have any new word, new vocabulary, uh, right? And we'll use the our app, uh, the, our app of uh, the root word app and uh, <coughs> inshallah. This will help us in understanding it, inshallah. And uh, all right, um, um, I'm just seeing if there's any translations available. Yeah, yeah, Tafsil Jalalin is here. We can use help of Tafsil Jalalin also, inshallah. Jalalin is helps us to understand it's like, uh, right? So, here. Right, he adds more Tafsil Jalal Jalaluddin Suyuti and another Jalal. Two Jalals, Alhamdulillah, two scholars have written this Tafsil. It's a very short Tafsil and uh, it just adds, you know, context to the verses. Right, it just adds context to the verses. So we we'll look at that, those verses and inshallah. So first, let's begin by listening to the first 16 verses, inshallah. So let's play this, inshallah. <coughs> And this is the website called uh, House of Quran. And we have, let's recite from 1 to 16. I see. And I like Hudafi, so I'm playing Hudafi. I share Hudafi. <coughs> The 16 uh, verses, inshallah, which we will do. And let's look at the translation. What are they asking about? Uh, better, better, we can uh, 
look at the translation here. Amma yatasa'alun. Amma, as we learned before, that amma, uh, it means it is a joint of two words, an plus ma, right? About what? An plus ma, right? And it was actually amma with an alif. And many times what happens when a preposition joins with uh, an interrogative particle, interrogative particle like ma, you drop the alif. Not all the time, but many times it happens, right? Uh, right? So that is amma. Amma. About what? Amma. Right? Amma. It is not ammun. It is not ammun, which makes people confuse and say ammun is uncle. Right? Uncle, brothers. I mean, father's brother is am. It's not ammun. It's amma. Right? This is a mixture of uh, about what. So about what? Yatasa'alun. Tasa'ala yatasa'alun is <coughs> to ask. This is a verb. Tasa'ala. And this is from this is form uh, six and uh, form six what happens in form six it is you have you have a verb right for Allah you add two letters in form six you add a ta in the starting and then you add uh, an alif here after the ayn kalima so the ta and the alif is extra so sa'ala so it becomes the sa'ala right and you add a mud here the sa'ala like this uh, like this maybe tasa ala yatas tasa ala right it becomes like this because two hamzas are coming so it becomes tasa ala hmm? so that's why we there's a mud here amma yatasa alun right yatasa alun so tasa ala means to ask one another it's a group activity okay it's a like you 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 you, you ask each other and generally form six has that meaning form six has that meaning tasa ala amma yatasa aluna and this una is the file, right? Una, plural, right? Una, yafaluna, yatasa aluna, right? So it comes, sa'ala comes a lot in the Quran, right? Samal sa'ala, tasa'ala, yatasa'alu. So the first madi is tasa'ala, yatasa'alu. And the amr is tasa'al, mutasa'il is the one who asks, uh, and maf'ul is mutasa'al, and tasa'ul is the master, right? Tasa'ul is the master. And sa'ala comes a lot in the Quran. To ask, 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 sa'ala, 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 sa'il, 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 is sa'il, one who asks, sa'il is the one who asks, and so on. There's so many times it comes. So this is the first verse. Amma yatasa'aluna. What are they asking about? Right? What are they asking about? <clears throat> right? So, and then the next verse goes, anin naba'il azim. Right? So what are they asking about? Right? About, about what? What thing? So Jalalain says, and the Tafsir Jalalain, about what? About what thing are the people of Quraysh questioning one another? So this gives a contextual Tafsir, right? We understand what's happening here. What are they questioning about each other? What are the people of Quraysh asking about? Because, because remember this word Jamil, the now Naba means news, and from that we get the word Nabi. Nabi means the one who gives the news, right? Gives the news about the Day of Judgment and so on. So he says, Anin Nabail Azim. So an is means about. It comes a lot in the Quran. An this is a preposition, uh, right? Not a preposition. Yeah, Yeah, preposition, right? It's a preposition. An preposition. An is a preposition. Naba naba means news. Nabaun nabaun is a news. News news naba. The root is na nun ba alif naba. Hamza actually naba. And it comes 160 times. Ambiuni to inform. Ambiuni. Ambe, right? Ambe, this is form four, which is used. Ambe. Ambiuni and Amba. Tilka min Amba il ghaib. Naba, the plural is Amba, I think. Amba. Amba also comes in the Quran. News, news, plural. Naba, story. Right? And so on. It comes news, 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 story, news, 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 information, information. And prophets also. Nabi, 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 Nabi. Nabi. Anin Naba il Azim. And in Nabi, Nabiya, Nabiya. All these prophets come from the same root word because prophet means uh, the one who informs. So Naba means news, right? So Amma Yatasa'alun, what are they asking about each other? They're asking about the great news, right? So about the great news, about the awesome tiding, right? The Seal Jalalan translation, they made it as awesome tiding. I mean, the tiding of the great news, that is the day of judgment. This is the explication of that thing. The interrogative is meant to emphasize its magnitude. So why, why do we have an uh, interrogation here? Because we to show magnitude. This is the Qarn. 
Quran, comprising news of resurrection and so on, which the prophets brought. So, what is this Naba? Naba is the uh, the the great news, right? The great news. So, let's go to the Tafsir. What he says about these two verses. So he begins by saying, a refutation against the idolaters' denial of the occurrence of the Day of Judgment. So the, the surah begins, in rejection of the idolaters' questioning about the Day of Judgment, due to the de denial of its occurrence, Allah says, What are they asking about? About the great news. Right? It is a great news. Meaning, what are they asking about? I mean, why are they talking about each other? They're asking each other about it, right? They're asking about the matter of the day of judgment. Right? They're asking about, oh, will it come? Will it really come, day of judgment? That is the great news. It's the Naba al Azim. This is the adjective, right? Naba al Azim. Nat, Manu'ut Nat. This is the great news, meaning the dreadful, horrifying, overwhelming information. Right? It is dreadful. The day of judgment is dreadful. It is horrifying. It is overwhelming. Right? Overwhelming. Right? So, <clears throat> so this is الرد على إنكار المشركين لوقوع القيامة. Right? الرد. It is, uh, you know, a deny, uh, refutation to those people who, who reject, who reject on the Day of Judgment. يقول تعالى منكرا الله, Allah says, you know, rejecting على المشركين في تساؤلهم عن يوم القيامة. Right? Why are you asking? It is something which is manifest, which is clear. Right? And في تساؤلهم في عن يوم القيامة إن كان لبخيها عما يتساؤلون عن النبع العظيم. I mean, what are you talking about? I mean, what are you talking about? And what are they talking about? Because this is Gia, right? What are they talking about? عن النبع العظيم. أي that means عن أي شيء يتساؤلون. On what things are they talking? Asking each other about. Right? What things? عن أمر القيامة on on the day on the matter of the day of judgment. وهو النبع العظيم. And it's a great thing. Are you and you're taking it so lightly. عن النبع العظيم يعني الخبر الهائل المفت المفضع الباهر right هائل again uh, the, uh, the he translated هائل as dreadful yeah dreadful horrifying مفضع مفضع is horrifying الباهر باهر is the overwhelming <coughs> الذي هم فيه مختلفون right and they are not in agreement about it the people are divided into الذي هم فيه مختلفون Right? Alladhi hum fihi mukhtalifoon. Alladhi, this is called ismul mausula, right? Related pronoun. This is a related pronoun. Alladhi, alladhi. And it comes a lot in the Quran. Hum, this is a pronoun. They, personal pronoun, right? Hum, fihi, in it, jal majur. Personal pronoun and preposition. Fihi, in it. So, about which they are in, concerning it, mukhtalifoon. Ikhtalafa, yakhtalifoon. The actual root of this, khalafa. Right, ikhtalafa is two. This is form eight. So, so we learned form six just now. I mean, not learned, but we, we saw form six. Now this is form eight. So in form eight, what do we do? We add uh, two letters again. Alif uh, ta. Uh, the alif and ta are added, right? If ta'ala, form eight. Right. So these are the two new letters: this hamza, this alif, and this ta. Right. The rest of ala, same thing. So actually, it was half the root letter, lam. And fa, but we added a ikhtalafa. Ikhtalafa, right? Disagreement. Ikhtalafa, ikhtalaf, right? Ikhtalaf, ikhtalafa, ikhtalifu, ikhtalif. And you have the active participle. Mukhtalif is the active participle. Mukhtalif. The ismul fa'il, fa'il, the active participle it's called. Mukhtalif, right? The one who is in dis disagreement. Because in Mazid fi, what we do is uh, like uh, kataba, we have three letters, right? Mujarrat. So we make it katibun, right? But for mazid fihi, we just add a mu. So it was yakhtalifu. Yakhtalifu. We added a mukhtalif, the one who disagrees. Mukhtalif. Like for example, you have form four, right? Aslama yuslimu. Form four, this is aslama yuslimu. Then the one who accepts Islam is called Muslim. We add a mu to the fail mudare. Very easy. We take yuslimu and change the ya to a mi, mi, Muslim. That's how it became Muslim. Right, Muslim. Similarly, here the one the people are in dis disagreement. This is a noun. Disagreement. hum fihi mukhtalifun. They are in disagreement about this. Right? They are in disagreement about this. Alladhi hum fihi mukhtalifun. They are meaning the people are divided into two ideas. It seems two ideas about it. Right? Two ideas about it. There are those who believe in it, 
right? Alhamdulillah, like Muslims, that uh, there are those who believe in it and those who disbelieve in it, right? They believe in some of them, they believe, some of them don't. Then Allah threatens those who deny the day of judgment by saying, so Allah threatens, right? He, he started it uh, by saying, uh, what are they asking about, talking about they are in disagreement. Then Allah says, concerning which they are at variance. So Jalalan Tafsir Jalalan says they are at variance. They are they are not fixed, right? They are wearable, right? Some some people for the believers affirm it. Believers believe in the day of judgment, while the disbelievers repudiate it. Right? Very hard word here. Repudiate it, right? Repudiation. Repudiation. I don't know how to try. Repudiate it. Right? <clears throat> and the believe disbelievers. Uh, disbelieve in it, right? reject it. Then Allah threatens, right? Allah threatens those who disbelieve. Oh, how dare you be disbelieve? Allah says, Kalla sayalamun, right? Kalla sayalamun. Nay, they will come to know. Kalla. So, what is this Kalla? Kalla is used a lot, right? Kalla. This is called aversion particle or health foods. Zajrin, it's called in Arabic, right? It means nay, no, never, right? To show how dare, yeah, never it can happen, right? If someone says something, something very bad, right? I mean, uh, will you do this anytime? Will you ever steal, right? So if someone asks any person, he says, never, nay, kalla, never it can happen, right? Never, ever. How can you even think about it that I will steal, right? It's kind of like kalla, nay, no, right? Kalla, it comes a lot in the Quran, 33 times in the Quran, right? Kalla, kalla, kalla. Right? By no means. So, Kalla has been translated and by no means. By never. It can never happen. Kalla. Right? Kalla say alamun. Right? I mean, Kalla say alamun. Soon, nay. Soon they will know. Never. I mean, they will know. So, it's actually he's saying never and then say alamun. No. So, it is no indeed a dis disavowal. Right? Uh, they will come to know. Right? Kalla. I mean, how dare you reject this? How dare you reject this? They will come to know. Say alamun. So it's actually Alima, right? So see, seen the purple is future participle. We add a future. Ya'alamu is a verb, right? Alima ya'alamu. And una is a file. Una, wow, noon. I mean, the wow is the file actually. The nose is the sign of being read. Malfo. Say'alamun. And it comes, uh, right? A lot in the Quran. Alima ya'alamu. Oh, it's 854 times. This root word comes 852. Sometimes it comes as alam, as mountains. Right, alam is used as mountains, and alamu most knowing, most knowing. Allahu alamu, Allah knows best. Allah knows best, knows best, knows best. Right, most knowing. And alamin also is come is made from this word because you know the world, right? So alam, right? Alim is the one who's the scholar. Alam is the world, right? Alamin, alamin, alamin. It comes a lot in the Quran. So the same root word. This is. Alam, alam, alam. Right? Alam, worlds, worlds, worlds. So many alamins. Right? Then alim. Right? Allah is the knower. Alim, alim. Be alamin. Learn, learn, learn. Right? 854 times you have these roots. Say alamun. Soon they shall know. Right? So he says in Arabic, Alladhi hum fihi mukhtalifun. Yani annasu fihi ala qawlain. Right? People are divided into two, two groups. Mu'minun fihi wa kafirun. There's one who believes in it and there's one kafir. Right? Threatening. Nay, they shall know. Again, Allah says, right? This is a great threat to the people, right? It's a great wa'id. Wa'id is a. Uh, Warning, yeah. This is a severe threat. Summa kalla sayalamun. Right? He denied. Okay, because Allah is repeating. Summa. Soon they shall know. I mean, it, it is going to happen. I mean, you will know, of course you know. Again they will come to know. Kalla sayalamun. Right? They will come to know. So he repeated kalla sayalamun two times. Summa by summa is summa means then. Right? Again, right? Summa again or then. Summa also comes a lot in the Quran, right? Summa. Summa, hmm? summa, then this is a coordinating conjunction. Don't worry about the English names. So, summa, a conjunction which is coordinating, right? Then, 
and comes how many times very lot of times ah uh, 338 times ah uh, summa 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 then 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 more over summa kalla thumma kalla sa'lamun again no indeed they will come to know right so he says reiterated for emphasis summa is added here to declare that the second threat of chastisement is more severe than the first right so the first threaten the second is more severe than the first god exalted be he that is allah subhanahu then alludes to his power to resurrect right so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about after this four verses right one two three four five verses five verses then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows his power mentioning allah's power and proof of his ability to resurrect the dead now people might be questioning right okay fine there's a day of judgment right right so but they may not you know be in disbelief so allah brings some proofs to show his power right to show his power zikru shay'in min qudrati allah from the qudra of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the ability of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kadalili ala qudrati ala al ba'th ba'd al maut to show his ability to ba'th ba'thus to this uh, for resurrection after after dying right for the resurrection after death and so the five verses i hope inshallah it is clear amma yatasa'alun about what are they asking about an nabai al azim about the great news alladhi hum fihi mukhtalifun about which they are in disagreement that they don't agree kalla sa'lamun soon they should, they should they will know and they will come to know nay again they will come to know at thumma kalla sa'lamun then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins right to explain his great ability to create strange things right he, he creates strange things right and amazing matters and strange things and amazing matters he brings this as a proof of his ability to do whatever he wishes right concerning the matter of the hereafter and other matter as other matters as well so he brings proofs right to show that uh, he created and he says alam naj'al al-arda mihada have we not made the earth as a bed meaning an established firm and peaceful resting place that is subservient to him let's look at the words of this alam have not so a plus lam right a is questioning and lam is negation particle lam and what happens after lam lam what happens you get a sukun najal this was actually sukun a jazam because it was joining later on we had to make it uh kasra uh, it was actually alam naj'al because lam what it does huruf jazima it is alam naj'al so lam is used a lot in the quran lam right lam is used in so many places lam 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 alam alam right alam do not or have we not uh, here the translating have we not because naj'al it is we right naj'al and ja'ala is to make make and ja'ala could be of <clears throat> to make something from nothing or to make something from something <clears throat> yeah, alhamdulillah right ja'ala <clears throat> yes uh, we expect alhamdulillah ja'ala is to make right we made <clears throat> sometimes ja'ala could be making <clears throat> something to something like um, allah made the day into the night right he converted the day into the night uh, make, make so ja'ala can be used for that also ja'ala right to make something from something or something from nothing also right so here alam naj'al al-arda right ja'ala it comes a lot in the quran he makes makes ja'ala yaj'alu fataha yaftahu right because this is ain right hamza ain ha ja'ala ja'ala ij'al ja'il is the uh, the one who makes right ja'il ja'il see alam naj'al alam naj'al right naj'al comes two times in the quran while the root word comes so many times 346 times jail jail going to place inni jailun right i am going to place a khalifa right in the earth jail i will make i will make jala yajaluna to make atajalu will you place right atajalu alihatan will you make <coughs> all the gods into <coughs> all the gods into one god <coughs> right ijal make 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 to make make right <coughs> jala place to make and so on right make do you make and we made wa ja'alnahum khalaifa fil ard ja'alni right so many times it comes jala 
then we have ard and uh, so ard is mean the earth right al ard al ard why is it fatha uh, because it is the object al ard right ard also comes a lot in this place and for us it may not look a great thing right i mean we are, um, uh, this will not be a striking thing but remember for the one who created everything he will take the names of only those things which in his eyes uh, you know you have to mention them like for example like we create something right we create a, like a child might make a drawing and he'll be so proud of his drawing right and he'll be so proud oh look at my drawing or some something yeah or we make we cook some food right we want others to appreciate it subhanallah but allah subhanahu wa taala he will mention only those things which are so important because he created everything i mean what should he mention about right khalaqa kull shay he created everything but he he specifies he created the earth which is very important right because we are living on it and comes in the quran 461 times and we look at the root words also like in english it is earth in arabic it is ard see there is some similarity right earth and ard so you know from latin and so on and so on some commonality is there here ard and earth right ard right uh, so have we not made the earth mihad what is mihad mahada it comes from mim hada mahad a resting place i think that does it come up more in the quran mihad mihad mahada a bed oh it is used for tamheed and ease oh to me easy okay tamheed and al mahidun the spreaders and mahada is also used form to to spread and mahd is also mean to the cradle the cradle so it has several meanings see mahd mahd means a cradle the child which says al mahdi al mahdi wa kahla isa alayhi salam was in the cradle right he spoke in the cradle right and mahda as a bed also is used mahda mahda mihad now here mihad resting place mihad al mihad the resting place mihad mihadun mihadun resting place resting place all the mihads are resting place and yamhadu as a verb it has been they are preparing yamhadu so there are several meanings but only the mihad means a resting place and it's it has come mihad as alam naj'alil arda mihada so the earth he called it a resting place that that's how it was so the, but the tafsil jalalain they translated as the bed right have we not made the earth a cradle a bed like a cradle right he he translated the earth like a cradle why like a cradle like why did he use the miha right maybe maybe because the earth is revolving and rotating and still we don't feel it like a, a child in the cradle he he sleeps also the earth uh, i mean the cradle is moving right <laughs> he, i mean the moving helps i mean he may not feel the moving maybe similarly the earth is revolving and rotating and we don't feel it at all i right? we are able to sleep peacefully i mean although everything should be shaking right it doesn't happen alhamdulillah so that's why maybe he used the word mihad a resting place so peaceful like a cradle the like right? it's a cradle where we sleep peacefully right? with no one to disturb us hmm? and not one day two days right? the whole of our lives you're sleeping right so it is a resting place right arda mihada hmm? and he 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 mentioned have we not made the earth a resting place he talked about those things right which a human beings you, um, to show us are relative to us right relative to the humans right he could have talked about have we not made the earth um a place of life a place of vegetation a place for dinosaurs so many things we could have talked about right a place of life because we know only of one place which has life but he wants the quran is not something about scientific or something right it is something which a normal person should also read in relate i mean it's not something like uh, um, right mihad everyone understands a resting place yes this world uh, this world is a resting place right this world is a resting place so alam naj'alil arda mihada have you not made this earth a resting place resting place mihad is a resting place a bed a cradle right mahd mahd is a cradle right so ibn kasir rahimullah he says 
meaning an established firm and peaceful right it is what established the earth is established it is firm mihad it is firm and peaceful also resting place that is subservient to them it is a resting place which we can build upon build upon houses and so on right thumma shara tabarak wa ta'ala yubayyinu qudratahu al-'azima then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started shara is to shuru is to start right and also also legislate but here the meaning is, is to start shuru karna right summa shara tabarak wa ta'ala yubayyinu clearing qudratahu al-'azima his great qudra his great ability ala khalq al-ashya al-ghariba strange things that's why gharib means strange that's why they translated as strange things wal umur al ajiba amazing things and people who live in the desert or who live with the nature they look at this amazing nature all the time maybe the city dwellers may not appreciate it so much but the people who just uh, dwell in the towns they appreciate the farmers right so that is why it is said that i mean it's a saying i don't know a farmer can never be an atheist right a social scientist can be an atheist but a natural scientist can never be an atheist because he sees so many wonderful signs of allah subhanahu and he knows that there is a designer who designed it it cannot come on its own al umur al ajib at dalati ala qudrati which show which indicate to his power to his ability ala ma yasha min amr al maad wa ghayrihi right of what he wills from the maad maad is the resurrection right of the returning point wa ghayri fa khal and he said alam naja lil arda mihada have we not made the earth a resting place right ay mumahada mumahada subservient lil khalaiq ay mumahada is subservient mahada yumahidu to to make it you know we can use it we can use it it, it, it it's not like it's dominating on us right this listening to water we can dig it and do so many things dalulan lahum right it has put it uh, it has uh, become humble for us right the earth khara sakinatan khara ya peaceful sakina peaceful sabitatan khara tan establish firm and peaceful right sabitatan then allah talks about wal jibala aw tada right alam naj'al al ard mihada wal jibala aw tada then he goes on to talk about mountains right he talks about the mountains right because that's the next thing which a person sees right he looks at the earth right the, the first thing any the land he sees then he could see the mountains wal jibal aw tada right and why is this mansub again because because of wow right it's all the alam najal alam najal al jibal right no need to repeat that so wal jibal jabal right wal jibal aw tada this is atf wal jibal aw tada and jabal comes in the quran a lot of times like 41 times mountains mountains right mountains 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 so many times it comes jibal jibal hmm? it comes for uh, the ship also wahiya tajri bihim fi mawjin kal jibal right man nuh alayhi salam ships was sailing among the waves when the whole world was flooded like a mountain right like mountains hmm? like mountains kal jibal see it comes here kal jibal right and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the mountains also so many times right mountains and hills also mountains right so right because he created such big mountains and people have gone to the mountains know about those like so wonderful majestic right mountains mountains wal jibal right jabal the plural is jibal right allah is the creator of the mountains also wal jibal awtad as pegs what is awtad pegs and the mountain pegs with which the earth is tied down like tents are tied down with pegs right The, this interrogative the interrogative is meant as in affirm, affirmative so here have we not created the bed this interrogation it, it is meant to be rhetorical there's no answer to it right have we not made it yes you have made it right allah subhanahu wa taala yes i have made it that's what he wants to say autad what is autad watad the root is watadun watadun the plural is autad peg peg you know uh, what do you call it? you take hammer uh, nail nail yeah peg a nail like a tent you you this is a tent and you, you you put pegs here right and you hammer it down right you put something here and you hammer it down it goes on now so the tent is similarly uh, the earth right the earth and this is one of the like many people say this is one of the miracles that because he talked about pegs because it prevents earthquakes right these mountains prevents earthquakes 
right? And it comes three times in the Quran. Stakes, they translate stakes also. Right? Stakes and outad, the pegs and stakes. What had stakes, right? And so let's see what he talks about. Well, jibala outad and mountains. So look at the visual imagery also about the earth. So the person is now thinking about the earth. Then he thinks about the mountains. Well, jibala outad, not just jibal. Have so he, he Allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that have you not made the mountains as pegs, as pegs, right? Well, jibala outad, right? And notice. It is taking two objects. See, Jala Najal. This is the object number one, and this is object number two, right? So Jala, he has made the earth as a resting place. He has made the mountains as a two objects can also be taken by Jala, right? Two objects. Have you not made the night as a as a resting place, as a resting time, right? Kind of like that, right? So meaning he made them as pegs for the earth to hold it in place. So the earth is held in place. We don't know how it is, maybe. Making it stable and firm by the mountains, so the mountains are required, right? So maybe the earth wouldn't have been stable and firm. This is so that it may be suitable for dwelling, right? The mountains help us to live and not quake, not have an earthquake with those who are in it, right? So Allah talks about the mountains. So He says, "I well jibala outada, I jalaha laha outada and arsaha. Arsaha, arsaha is like an anchor." Arsaha. Bismillahi majreha wa mursaha. Like Nuh alayhi salam when he, right? Qala al kabu fiha. Ride in the ship. The waves are coming high tide, right? Qala al kabu fiha. Bismillahi majreha wa mursaha. In the name of Allah is the the cruise of the ship and its anchoring. Wa mursaha. Mursaha. Inshallah, it will come in the future also. Arsa, you see, is to anchor something else, to, to fix something like. A ship is sailing, right? You have wow, this is not a ship. How do you do a boat? Maybe, right? I'm so bad at drawing, but still, you you put an anchor like this, right? You put an anchor like this, and so that the ship, right? So that the ship doesn't uh, uh, doesn't sway, right? When you when you want to want to stay in some place, right? So, arsa you see, so so arsa has so the the mountains also anchor the earth, right? And they, they make it fixed and is to make it fixed again. And doesn't shake. It was to shake. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about It talks about us. It talks about human being. So the earth came, then the mountains came, then he goes to the smaller, the people, right? The people, right? Khalaqnaakum azwaja. Right? The earth, the mountains, right? So from the big to the small to the small. It's fun. Wa khalaqnaakum azwaja. Wa khalaqnaakum azwaja. And wal jibal awtad. Awtad is again like nails, right? Awtad. And we created you in pairs. Oh, we created you in pairs. And we created males and females. Right? So we created in pairs. Uh, and pairs doesn't mean uh, right? just male and female. Like Mohsin Khan translation says tall and short. Right? Everything has an opposite here. Good and bad. Right? That's also azwaj. Azwaj. Right? So what does khalaqnaakum Khalaqa is the verb, why is the uh, uh, why is the conjunction? And na is the it was actually khalaqa na this is na lift. But because uh, Quranic style of writing is different, it's just written like this, you know, shortcut. And we read it khalaqanakum, right? This is uh dagger alif it's well. Khalaqanakum and this is the file and this is the mafulam bihi, right? Uh, we created you. And the we here doesn't mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is plural, it's the royal we, right? Royal we, right? Royal that we did this, right? We, it's showing royal, uh, royalty. Khalaqa yakhluku, bab, nasara, nasara yansudu, khalaqa yakhluku, ukhluk, the fail amr, khaliq is the creator, khaliq, pa'il, pattern, makhluk is the creation, makhluk, maf'ul pattern, right? Passive participle, maf'ul. 
and creation comes a lot in the Quran. Eh? Khalaqa, khalaqa, khalaqa. Oh, 261 times. Khalaqa. He creator. He's the Khaliq creator. Right? Allah says, I am the creator and you worship someone else. Khaliq, Khaliq, Khaliq. And, and Khalaq is also coming. Khalaq means share. Right? Bi Khalaqikum. Khalaq. Khalaq means share. Right? Khaliq, Khaliq, Khaliq. We created you. We created you. We created you. Allah says so many times, right? We created you. Nahnu khalaqnakum. Thumma razaqnakum. And gave you risk also. Right? Khalaqnakum. Wa khalaqnakum. Azwaja. Azwaja. Zawj. Now, azwaj could mean Right. Azwaj can also mean uh, spouses, right? Spouses, and the azwaj can also mean pairs, right? Pairs, spouses, and spares. And it comes in the Quran, zawd, zawd, azwaj, and it comes how many times? Zawd, right? Eighty-one times, right? Eighty-one times. So azwaj also means pairs, right? But also azwaj means spouses. Zawjaini, zawjaini, a pair, like zawjaini, thnaini, azwaj and zawjain, azwaj, zawd, zawd. Zawd can also mean kind. So they've translated so many ways. Mates, azwaj and mates, azwaj, kind, spouses, pairs, wives, right? And zawajna, we married her to you. Zawaja, you zawajus to marry. So zawajat, our pair, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa khalaqna kum azwaja. We created you in pairs, right? We created you in pairs. <laughs> so Allah says, meaning, the meaning is, Male and female, both of them enjoying each other. And by this means, procreation is achieved, right? Important action is achieved, procreation. This is similar to Allah's statement. Then he brings another uh, verse, right, to prove. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ And from his signs, أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا So, uh, and among his signs is that he created for you wives, Right? Not really wise spouses, yeah? because azwaj can mean anything, but this translated to wives. Litaskunu ilayha. Right? Sakana yaskunu. From among yourselves, that you may find repose in them, that you may find peace in them. Right? Sakaskunu. Askana yaskunu. Sakana yaskunu. Right? So you find peace in them. Litaskunu. Wajala baynakum. And he has put between you mawadda wa rahma. And he has put between you mawadda and rahma. He put affection and mercy, mawadda and rahma. Right? He has put so uh, he's bringing verses to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us that one of the greatest blessings is spouses, right? To show spouses and among the signs is created. And this is the way a person achieves sukoon, right? He achieves litaskun uh, ilayha. But this is uh, contradictory to what the society tells us. There's the, like uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, jokes and things going on in marital life like people crack jokes and say that it's the worst thing ever don't get married and so on but subhanallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the opposite right this is getting married is the best way to find repose in it to find peace right and yes Allah is the one who creates mawadda mawadda is affection right affection for the spouses and mercy is also required right mercy between the spouses Right, so he brings verses to show azwaja, and we have created you in pairs. Hmm? Right, so he's continuous. Let's read uh, this one. وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا يعني ذَكَرًا وَأُنْثَى It means ذَكَرًا وَأُنْثَى Yes, get it. Males and females يَتَمَتَّعُ كُلُّ مِنْهُمَا Enjoying each other. تَمَتَّعُ يَتَمَتَّعُ Is to enjoy. يَتَمَتَّعُ كُلُّ مِنْهُمَا بِالْآخِرِ وَيَحْسُلُ حَسَلَ يَحْسُلُ is to attain. وَيَحْسُلُ التَّنَاسُلُ بِذَلِكَ What is تَنَاسُل? Oh, procreation. Oh, تَنَاسُل. Yeah, نَسَل. نَسَل is procreation. Yeah, reproduction. وَتَنَاسُلُ بِذَلِكَ So that humanity continues, right? It doesn't get, get extinct. وَتَنَاسُلُ بِذَلِكَ Procreation is achieved. كَقَوْلِهِ 
like Allah says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ and from his signs, أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا right? He has created spouses. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا and uh, so that you have, you find peace. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا you find love and mercy or affection and mercy. And وَخَوْلُ تَعَالَ then Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَعْدًا right? And we have made your sleep as a thing for rest. So now, he talked about three things, right? The earth, the mountains, and we created you, right? In pairs, we have created you, us. Now he talks about things which are important, right? Sleep. I had so many people, they don't have sleep. Right? Sleep disorders, right? They are not, they're unable to sleep at night. And this is important. Sleep is important. And he made وَجْعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ subhata. Right? He has, he has made. Ja'alna again made نَوْمَكُمْ He has made the sleep as what? Naum, naum, naums comes sleep. نَوْمَكُمْ Your sleep. Right? He says your sleep we have created. Not, our, not his. Right? Because Allah doesn't sleep. Right? Allah doesn't sleep. Naum. Right? Naum. It comes nine times in the Quran. And uh, one of those is manam. Oh, manam, manam. Dream has come. Dream. Al manam means dream. Manam. And the one naimun, sleep, asleep. The one who's naim, naimun, a naum. Sleep, naum. One naum. Naum akum, your sleep. So as naum, it has come three times in the Quran. Right? Naim and manam. Dream has come. Manam is dream. Naum akum, sleep. Right? Very important sleep. Wajalna naum akum. Subat. Subat is what? Rest again. Right? So mihad, again mihad is used resting place, but subat is rest. Right? Rest itself, sabata. Sabata. Subat, it comes and sabat, like the name sabat, the day of sun, uh, Saturday is called as sabd because on the that day they were told to rest. Don't work, don't do anything. Just pray like we have Friday, right? Although on Friday we are allowed to work, but they had strict Sabbath, Sabbath, resting day, a Sabbath, Sabbath, rest. So the Sabbath day, Sabbath day, and Subhat, rest, it comes in full Khan also Subhat, huh? resting, resting time, night is meant for resting, right? Uh, Subhat, resting time, right? So that is why the sleep which we get in the night, even though we might sleep the whole day, we'll never get the sleep, right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the night as, uh, Yes, a sting place. And the Sabbath also has come from that name, Sabbath. Right? Sabbath. So he says, Wajalna naumakum subhat. You have made and made your sleep for rest. Right? And have made your sleep as a thing for rest. Right? For your bodies, a repose for your bodies. Right? And he talked about the earth also as resting. So he says all the time he keeps telling about resting, resting, right? Right? Because so because resting is so important. Right? Many people today hate resting. And they have this thing, right? They want to study in the sleep also and so on. Right? I mean, if they have exam, they won't sleep. Right? Also, resting is very important for memory creation. Because anything which is difficult, if you study now and after you sleep, the brain works in the night and the morning, yeah, your your cement is dried and your wall is you know good. So you know, resting is so important for the memory also. And he says, the tafsir, and tafsir says, وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ subata," meaning a cessation. You stop of movement. Right? You, you stop all your tensions, all your worries and so much. It's such a beautiful thing, right? Sleeping. In order to attain rest from the frequent repetition. It is repeat, right? Every day is a repetition. And you get up in the morning and repeat, repeat. So resting, the sleeping gives you a rest. And going about in search of livelihood to go and earn money and so on and so much during the day. Right? Right? A similar ayah has been mentioned in Surah Al-Furqan. Allah has already mentioned, وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ libasa, And we have made night, the night is a covering, like a libas. Right? The, like the covering, the clothes, uh, so, uh, help us uh, hide the blemishes similar to the night. Right? The night help us rest and uh, you know, rejuvenate. Meaning it's shade and darkness covers the people. Right? It covers the people. The darkness covers the people. This is as Allah says, uh, which will come in the future, inshallah. In Suratul Layl. The whole Surah is about the night. 
so night is so important right right by the night as it conceals it like night right and people who have seen the night how it comes the sunset and so on it's so beautiful right the sun it comes the night right night is so peaceful and so you know the people's emotions are high at night time generally speaking right more than the night time and depression patients are more depressed at the night time because the emotions are high because it's so peaceful and so on so you start getting agitated because you are not used to such peace hatada commented wajalna layla libasa on this verse libas libasa meaning a tranquil residence right? the night is tranquility it's a place of residence right it's a residence concerning allah statement wajalna nahara maasha right he goes on saying about now talking about talking about the day right talking about the day so wajalna nawmakum sudada ay khat'an lil halqa right to stop khat'an is to cutting right you khat'a yaqta'u is to cut cutting of haraka haraka is the uh, movement right haraka haraka li tahsul ar raha so that the person attains raha peace calm min kasrat at tardad right from frequent repetition was sa'i and working hard and so on fil ma'ayish for earning livelihood fi ghadh al nahar fi ard al nahar right in the present in the display, at the daytime wa qad taqaddama mithlu hadhihi al aya fi surah al furqan right this has repeated trend so for qawma ja'alna al layla libasa right allah has made the night an, uh, as a libas ay yaghsha an nas al zalamu wa su'a sabadu darkness and its blackness right it covers it wal layli idha yaghshaha وقال قتادة في قوله وجعلنا الليل لباسا أي سكنا a peaceful place a residence وقوله تعالى وجعلنا النهار معاشا أي جعلناه مشرقا نب نيرا مضيا right then he talks about the day right وجعلنا الليل لباسا and we made the night so he talked about the earth right first the earth then the mountains then the human beings وخلقناكم أزواجا then he talked about the sun going down right the sun going down the night then he talked about the sun coming up right the sun coming up bad drawing i know but still <laughs> the sun coming up wajalna nahara maasha right and why did he speak about and he made the night a cloak right uh, right wajalna layla libasa as a covering oh right Allah Allah talked about sleep then he talked about night right wajalna layla libasa and he and he created the night as a covering because sleeping is generally default the default mode for sleeping is at the night right lay 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 comes in the quran a lot of the time lay night 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 is so important right night and he as a covering right it libas is covering right libas right uh, to mix also like covering talbi suna right libas libas doubt labs labs is also a doubt labsun so allah allah talked about the mount uh, first the earth then the mountains then the human beings then the sleep then the place where you sleep i mean the time at we should sleep is at night libas night he has made the night wa ja'alna layla libasa and made the night a cloak to cover you with its darkness so notice we talked started talking about the day of resurrection then he talked about the things which he created which he made right wa ja'alna al-layla libasa then he talks about the day wa ja'alna an-nahar nahar is the day nahar nahar also so many 130 times right nahar and one meaning is tanhar to repel nahar day 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 so many times day 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 nahar nahar and he made the day as maash maash is livelihood a time for seeking livelihood right so allah subhanahu wa that is where the word comes aisha the one who lives right? aisha aisha is a life aisha right maash and the thing which is required to live is a maash right a livelihood i mean so even allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that the day is for livelihood right a time for seeking livelihood right a time for taking seeking money and to earn because islam is not a religion where it says oh don't earn money and so on right because allah has made it a way of earning this world right to help us to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to sustain and to live 
It's not like we should go to jungles and leave the world, right? There's no Lahabaniya. There's no, you know, what do you call that? Those people who leave the world. There's no uh, monasticism in Islam, right? There's no monas monastics. Oh, you, it's, it's not a bad thing to earn money, right? But we should look, uh, we should see that we earn halal sources of income and uh, avoiding cheating and lying and so on. So the day is for livelihood, right? So he says about the day, right? Meaning we have made the Nahal Ma'asha a day of livelihood. We have made it radiant and luminous, right? We made it, uh, we can see through the day and shine so that people will be able to move about in it. If the day was also like the night, I mean, we can't see things. So why will people move from here to there, right? By it, they are able to come and go for their livelihood. They're able to go and travel because of the sun, right? Livelihood, earning business dealings and other than that as well, right? In reference to Allah's statement, right? Uh, so they are able to mushrikan nayiran. Nayiran is to have, it has nur, mutiyan, liyatamakkan an nas, so that people can move around. Mina tasarruf fihi, so that people are able to move around. Wadhahabi wal maji'i lil maash, to come and go for maash, maash, for livelihood, wa takasub, wa tijarat. Or for business dealings and so on, or business dealings and so on, right? So this is what uh, so I think we can finish this, right? 15, 16 is the end, right? 16 is the end, right? So inshallah we'll finish this. 16 verses, right? 1 to 16, we'll finish this inshallah ta'ala. Then he talks about, so he talked about the earths, the mountains, the humans, the sleep, the night, the day. Right? This is what is going on. Then he goes and he says, Now, again, he goes back to the physical things. Right? Because he talked about the earth, but what about the heavens? He brings it here now. Right? He talks about the physical things. Right? First, he talked about the earth, the mountains, the humans. Then he talked about what humans need. Livelihood they need. They need sleep. They need rest. Right? So he made the night and the day. Then he goes back saying, وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا شِدَادًا Bana yabni is to build, right? Bana. Right? Banana. Right? To build something. Bana yabni. Bana. To build something. Right? To be constructed is what they translated as. Construction. فَوْقَكُمْ Above you. فَوْقَ is above you. Right? فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا شِدَادًا سَبْعًا سَبْعًا we can construct seven. What's strong? Right? So, well, so he constructed about you seven strong heavens. So it is understood the meaning here is seven strong. Allah says there are seven heavens above us. Strong that too. They're not weak. Shidad is strong. Right? One zero times. Ashad the stronger and so on. So many root words come here. Ashad then Shidad. Right? And built above you seven mighty ones. Right? Mighty one, there are seven strong, seven heavens. Shid is the plural of Shadda. Right? Shiddun Shidad. Right? That is to say strong and sturdy, unaffected by the passage of time. Like so many years go on, but there's no hole. I mean, we don't have holes and weakness and the sky is falling down and so on, right? With the passage of so many millions of years, how many years the earth has been there, the sky is strong. Right? Uh, Right? وَبَنَيْنَ فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا سَبْعًا شِدَادٍ شِدَادٍ Strong. Meaning the seven heavens in the vastness, the vast loftiness, perfection, precision and adornment. And so many things with both stable and moving stars. The stars which are stable and they are moving stars. Thus Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَحَاجًا Right? Then he talks about the things which are there in the sky. يعني السماوات السبب في اتساعية وارتفاعية vastness and Irtifa uh, is the highness, wa ihkamiha, wa itqaniha, wa taziniha, all these things, right? All these things, adornment, precision, perfection, right? As thawabit was siyarat, right? Thawabit is the one which are things which are fixed on the earth, fixed in the skies, and the siyarat. Siyarat is the one which are moving, siyarat. Walihada qala ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, wa ja'alna siraja wa hada, the things which are there in the heavens. What are the first things in the, in the skies which you see? A lamp, Siraj. Siraj, Wahaj. Wahaj is a, it's not a normal lamp, it's a burning lamp, radiant lamp. Siraj. And Wajalna Siraj Wahaj. Siraj is a lamp. 
right? Siraj comes four times, a lamp, 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 four times in the Quran, Siraj. Siraj comes first, and Wahaj, people put the name Wahaj also, a radiant, Wahaj. Right? Only one time it comes in the Quran, Wahaj. Right? Only once it comes. Right? Wahaj, a burning, right? radiant, Wahaj, namely the sun. Right? So instead of saying Shams, he said Siraj and Wahaja. Siraj and Wahaja. So what he says, Ibn Kasi Rahimullah about it, uh, <coughs> meaning <coughs> the radiant sun that gives light to all of the world, right? The sun, Siraj and Wahaja. It's light glows for all the people. Wahaj, it's Wahaj, it's glowing of the earth. Allah then says, Anzalna min al Mu'asirati ma an sajjaja. Right, and we send down from the Mu'asirat. I think it is enough, inshallah. We'll continue from verse 14, inshallah, next week. Uh, so, I just want to revise what we <coughs> read till now. Right, he created a Siraj and Wahaja, yani a Shams al Munira, ala Jamia al Alam al Latiya, the Wahajud, the Uha. Right, it, it, it is something glowing for the people, right? Al Ardi Kulihim for the people, Jamia al Alam for the whole world. Right, for the whole world, uh, so it is glowing for the whole world, right? So, we did 13 verses to Alhamdulillah, so very fast, right? Very fast. I mean, because they're short verses, right? Alhamdulillah, the short verses, uh, and it's not like Surah Al Fatiha where we'll take one verse so much time, right? Alhamdulillah, 13 verses we've done today instead of 16, because I think because uh, next, what is happening, he's bringing some ahadith and so on from uh, to prove more sirat to show that what is more sirat and so on, right? So uh, let's listen to the audio once again, right? But now only till 13, because we understand the meaning now, most of it, right? 13 verses, inshallah. And then uh, let's read the translation again, right? Inshallah, before we end the class. So let's listen to somebody else, maybe. Mm -mm -mm. Any, any favorites of anyone here? I have some names here. Anyone? Mm -mm -mm. Maybe Haniya Rafi, maybe. Okay, let's listen to him. Oh, I'm sorry. We can't hear. I forgot to share. and uh, no sound yet oh okay now alhamdulillah yeah alhamdulillah uh, alhamdulillah uh, so uh, i could yeah, alhamdulillah so that was uh, the the 13 verses i inshallah like in this way we hope to do all the uh, the surahs yeah, inshallah so that uh, the juz amma inshallah um, uh, it should be 
clear with us, inshallah, because there are several difficult words here. So in th maybe in the 13 verses, maybe Naba, okay, Naba is news, right? Mukhtalifun, Sayalamun, Summakalla Sayalamun. Mihad, Mihad, we might forget. Mihad is a resting place. Mihad, a hard word, right? Mihad, a difficult word. Autad, Autad, we might, well, Jibal, Autad. What was Autad again? It was a peg, a nail, on, in, right? A nail in the, like mountains are the nails. Hmm? pairs. Subat again, Subat. What does Subat actually mean? A place of rest. Yes, new for, yes, Alhamdulillah. I had so many new words here, right? Majalna no makum subata, right? Uh, rest. Wajalna layla, and we have made the night as a covering. Libas, libas, as a covering. Wajalna nahara maash, maash is a livelihood, yeah? Maash, maasha, ubanaina fauka kum saban shidada, and we have made seven strong, right? He didn't make, mention the skies here. Seven strong, seven strong, right? The adjectives kind of, right? Seven strong. Wajalna sirajo wahaja. We have made a burning lamp. And we translate the burning first, right? Wahad, a radiant lamp, right? A lamp which is burning, right? Because the sun is burning and it's giving us light, right? The sun. Hmm? Inshallah, we'll continue from 14 to 16 next week, inshallah. Ta'ala. Hmm? Inshallah, we'll continue from here and here, right? Wanzalla min al mu'asirati. Man, he talks about water next year. Ma'asirat wata sajjaja. Inshallah. Jazakallahu khair. If there are any questions, we can take them, right? Inshallah, else we'll continue next week. So uh, whoever's memorizing these surahs or haven't yet memorized, inshallah, please memorize them. Right? Once we understand the meaning, it'll be easier for us, inshallah. Right? And once we memorize along with its meaning, the meaning will also stick in our minds. Also, the words will also stick in our minds, inshallah. And we should not have confusion, confusion also, inshallah, because we know the sequence. First the earth, then the mountains, then the human beings. Then he talks about sleep, then the night, then the day. Then he talks about the sun, right? uh, the heavens and the sun. Then he talks about water, right? the most important thing, which we cannot live, right? the water, hmm? inshallah. Uh, Jazakallah khair, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru wa atubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum wa